Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for your people. Lord God, we come as needy. We all come to your throne of grace, and we thank you, Abba, Father, our Daddy, that you have something for us from heaven today. And we just wait on your tangible presence. We say, welcome, Holy Spirit. Unless you move in our hearts, O oh Lord, Holy Spirit, unless you do a, a supernatural creative work, O oh God, we can do nothing. We are not here to perform. We're here to look to you as a pioneer and perfecter of our faith. I thank you for the power of your word, your spoken word. It's creative. It's alive. It's living and active and powerful. Lord, I thank you that you have sent this word. Put it in your, uh, right here, where we can hold it and read it and speak it, Father God. And we thank you, Father, you've got something to accomplish this morning. You want to do something in us, not just the person behind us or beside us, oh God, but in us. We're saying, give us, give me this day my daily bread. Give me something I can sink my teeth into. Give me something that I can do. Lord, do something that's going to be tangible, that's going to be transformable. We ask you this in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. I just want to go, um, we're going to be... the. Talking about Jesus, the Lord of Lords. Last uh, couple weeks was Jesus, King of Kings. But now we're going to be talking about Jesus, Lord of Lords. And it's going to take uh, a few weeks to, to actually cover all the things that he's Lord of. Uh, just to prepare you, this sounds a bit heavy. Oh, dear. You know, um, some parts of scriptures are a little bit tougher to chew. And this is a, a little bit of a tougher passage to chew. But it's it's going to it's gonna get good, okay? So I don't want anything religious. Oh, dear. Woe to us. Uh, so let's just read his word. Then Jesus began to denounce the towns in which most of his miracles had been performed because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the miracles that were performed in you would have been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it'll be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, You'll be lifted up to the, will you be lifted up to the heavens? No. You'll go down to Hades. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. But I tell you that it'll be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. At that time, could you say that with me? At that time? At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. So, Lord, amen. Who is he Lord of? What is he Lord of? Because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to who? Little children, yes, Father, for this is what you are pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is what? Easy. Easy and my burden is light. Have you ever envied a child? Oh my goodness, while you're working and doing circles around them, they're just, they get up and they just get to play. What do you pick? I remember taking my kids into their playroom, opening their double closet doors and had all the things lined up. What do you want to play? Play-Doh or Lego or puzzles or what do you pick? And uh, finger painting, you get the big roll of paper out and they get the finger paint. Okay, done now, mommy cleans up. Okay, what next activity? And the kids just, hey, you're here for me. I'm just enjoying the day. Amen. And Jesus points out children so often when he wants to teach us something so profound. Because children are humble and they're teachable and they're eager and they're not burdened and they don't get weary. 
uh, they are just secure. I think of my childhood and just climbing up at the kitchen table. I can remember uh, back about five or six even, remembering uh, summer hopping up at the table, and I could still see my mom at the sink preparing food and putting out toast and eggs as fast as she could move her hands, and we would just sit there ready to be fed, and then outside we'd go to play, running our bare feet until lunchtime, you know, and, and there was just this carefreeness about being a child, and there was such a sense of security. We weren't worried. My parents were dirt poor, but I didn't know that. All I knew is I got fed breakfast, lunch, and supper. And in between, we played, and it was just wonderful. And Jesus wants our lives to be wonderful. Amen. And he is Lord of heaven and earth. Uh, just like we talked about last week, he's got to be the king of your heart before he's the king of kings. Yes, he owns the universe, but he's got to be king of our hearts first. And he wants to be Lord of our hearts, Lord of our lives. He is the Lord of heaven and earth, but he's Lord of so many things. Uh, how many times it says Lord? 670 times alone in the New Testament. 670 times Lord. So he must be Lord of something. So we just are in for a bit of a, a challenge here. But first of all, uh, he's the Lord of the supernatural. He's the Lord of miracles. We saw some supernatural in the last few days. The fact that you are here you, is proof that God is supernatural. Because we cannot be born, uh, man born again is, is a, the biggest spiritual miracle. And if you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are the recipient of the most incredible miracle. What could compare to that? What could compare to that? And I can hardly wait to do some practical preaching on, on both sides of the coins. Because there's a reason. We could just have healing lines till, till the blue moon. Um, and there's, there's just so much part of our part and God's part and hearing and listening and Jesus is Lord of the supernatural but he had a specific word for every single healing he had a specific word he said he did nothing except what he saw the father doing and there's times he gave people instruction like go and sin no more and there were other times where he'd say go and tell no one or go show yourself to the priest each time Jesus heard a specific word what's God's way and so I want you to know Jesus is Lord of the supernatural but point two what is a supernatural to do what a, why did Jesus go about doing miracles and healing all who are oppressed of the devil. Why was this? And we find in that passage that he is Lord of the changed life. He said if the miracles were done in these other towns, they would have repented. And I'm, you know, I want to show you two different kinds. Maybe you think of repentance, someone falling on their knees and crying and beating themselves. And oh, I'm so sorry. And I, you know, all of this. Well, I'm not discounting godly grief that leads people to repentance. But true repentance just means a changed life. Repentance means you are going this way. You are living this way, talking this way, acting this way. This was your life. You are going this way. Then you got a miracle and you got a word from heaven. And you did a total change around. And now your life is completely different. Amen. And if that didn't happen for you and you just got your little miracle and you're going, well, I feel a little better. But you didn't change anything. Guess what? You'll just get sick again. Yeah. Because a lot of sickness on the earth is because of our wrong choices. Amen? And so God wants us to stay healthy and stay strong. And he shows us in the word how to do that. And that's the practicality of it all. That's where my heart and my passion is. Because God can give you an instantaneous miracle. But if, if things don't change in our talking, our thinking, our acting, our lifestyle... 
So Jesus said they would have repented. They would have changed their ways. My people perish for lack of knowledge. They perish. They're dying and they're sick by the thousands because of lack of knowledge. And so God wants a, us to change our ways. That's what he was looking for. He was looking for, yes, he did the miracles, but to turn their eyes to Jesus. Turn your eyes on Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. To, to get a miracle and get in touch with God, what God is really wanting you to do is, wow. Lord, you are my Lord and my God. We'll see Thomas doubted Jesus, though he had seen all the miracles. He said, I'm not even going to believe until I stick my finger in it, in his side, unless I feel for sure that's, where I'm not, I won't believe. And then Jesus said, go ahead, Thomas. And he said, my Lord. And he followed Jesus wholeheartedly. Amen. So what Jesus, he is Lord of the supernatural. That's what Jesus does. He loves to do this. He loves, he wants everybody. He would that all prosper. He would that all be in health. Even as your soul and your mind and your will and your thinking prospers. He wants us whole body, soul, and spirit. That's why he went to the cross. But he's saying, hey, if you would have believed the God way, you would have changed your way of living. And so that is so key, is to, to change. He is the Lord of, of a changed heart, a changed life, a changed attitude. When Jesus came into my life, he began to change things. I had a lot of changing to do. I still have changing to do. That's what repentance is all about. It's not like, oh, I've been caught. I repent. I repent. That's not repentance. <laughs> repentance is, this is not good for me. I got to change it. I got to take this out of my life. This is not good for me. This is not. Jesus, I need your power. I need, I need you to be Lord of this part of my life. Lord of my body. Lord of my thinking. Lord of my acting. Lord of my speaking. You've got to be Lord. He's Lord of a changed life. Third, he's Lord of heaven and earth. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Isn't that something? Jesus praised his Father. That all things were came from the Father. I praise you, Father. He knew his Abba, Father. The things he saw and the things he did all were related to his Abba, Father. And this Father's Day, I pray again, you get that revelation. I was telling Mark this week, I still remember the exact place I was sitting when the Lord healed my heart and gave me the love of the Father. And nothing, nothing, nothing has ever, ever, ever been the same since. And Jesus knew his relationship with his Father so much so that when he was doing the miracles and he was seeing all this happening because God, he was anointed by God. He had stripped himself of every power and he was operating fully as a man, acknowledging the Father as Lord of heaven and on earth and he couldn't help but praise him. I praise you, Father. Because he had that relationship and he knew who he was because he could do nothing except what he saw the Father doing. If you have not had that experience to the fullest, I pray that you will, I encourage you, this is what I did. I would be about 24 years old at the time and I sat in a chair in the corner, a navy blue velvet chair, and I just did what I did several times. I said, I am sitting here until I, I knew I needed a healing in my soul realm. So I had a pretty good daddy, but he was still human. And he didn't get me. He still never got me until he died and went to heaven. And then I felt like he got me. 
but you know what? Your Abba Father in heaven gets you. Amen. Gets you. And I remember sitting there until, and I just kept worshiping my father until I just go, oh my goodness, my heart was so flooded with the love of God. And the Bible says that. The love of God is shed abroad, where? In our hearts. So that we can talk to our Abba Father the way Jesus did. Father, I praise you. Because he knew who he was, maker and Lord of heaven and all of earth. He is Lord. How many lords? How many have been a lord? What is a lord anyways? A lord is a master, a ruler, a master of servants, one who has dominion over others as subjects, to whom service and obedience is due. He is a master, a chief, a prince, a ruler. In history, how many lords have there been? How many people in all the kingdoms of England and Scotland, Lord, and some master and chief, and someone in the, all the armies, somebody was the chief, the prince. How many? And Jesus is the Lord of lords. Amen? So he's the Lord of heaven and in earth. He's going to be, he has a final say. And then the, he says, Jesus says, I praise you. Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father. Isn't this something? Here we are preaching on the names of God, and we happen to be at Lord of Lords, and it's Father's Day, and there's a revelation of the Father, and this children's dedication, and here there is talking about children. I go, honestly, Father, I praise you because you've hidden this kind of stuff, the re uh, revelation. You've hidden them from the wise and the learned who think they know all. One, what's so wonderful about a child is they ask their daddy everything. Have you found that young daddy? Daddy, how come all the lights just go on at the, in, in the city all at once? Daddy, how come this, how come that? And you talk to a little child and they honestly believe their daddy can do anything. This is one of the cutest pictures. My husband, uh, when all the kids were little, he had this wooden workbench in the garage. And it did not matter what broke, whether it's their Barbie that was beyond, br uh, or the Barbie car is like John wrote it down. All the way down the stairs because he had to play Barbie. So uh, what do you do with the Barbie car? You sit on it and you ride it down the stairs. Well, the car is broken. Oh, don't worry. Just put it on daddy's work bit. He'll fix it when he gets home. Daddy could fix anything, right? Children have such trust. Are we the same? Do we come to our father and say, he can fix anything? Amen. Just put it on the daddy's workbench. Well, guess what? Just put it on daddy's footstool. When he gets home from work, he'll fix it. And the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and the earth is his footstool. Are we, do we have that same trust? Our daddy can fix it. That is faith. Children have faith. What is faith? We can spiritualize faith. But faith is just believing daddy can fix it. Amen. With the confidence, doesn't matter how absolutely gone it is, is beyond, is anything beyond our Abba Father? Is anything beyond? No, it isn't. So he's not going to fix a broken plastic Barbie car, but maybe he'll get you a new one, right? You know, like, I mean, he can do anything. Can he fix broken hearts today? I'll just, I'll just give it to Daddy. He's, he can fix it. He can fix anything. That's faith. And that's why Jesus says, Oh, Father, all these miracles, they've seen it. If these miracles were done anywhere else, they would have changed their life. They would have changed their attitude. They would have wanted to know my Father because he's just revealing the Father's heart right there and then. Amen. And so he is Lord of Revelation. How many of you know that? He's the Lord of Revelation. Unless your eyes open, you're not going to be able to see. That's what he's saying. Unless you change, Jesus said in another passage, unless you change, you're never going to see the kingdom. You're never going to see the truth, right? Why? Because your brain gets in the way. And he's saying, you've, you've hidden these things from the wise and the learned. Well, you know what? 
pride blinds. How many of you know there's nobody so blind as someone who's proud? They know. You can't teach them nothing because they know and they're smarter than you and they've already got this big, all big list of uh, education and, and God's saying, I make foolishness of all of that. The wisdom of the foolishness. It's a foolishness to God. Because there's a higher and there's a greater law here. I am Lord of revelation. So Paul prays, I pray the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened to see the hope to which you've been called. Your glorious riches and the inheritance that is yours in Christ is yours. Amen. And you just get this confidence where you go, when you get a revelation of that, you know your father hears you. There's not a shadow of doubt that your father, your Abba father hears you. I remember asking my dad, he, we had six kids in our family, and one day I was sitting at the table and I said, Dad, if you could only keep two kids, who would you keep, me and who else? I just had a confidence he would keep me. I wondered who else he would keep, if he could only keep. You know what? The, there is that confidence that says, my father has many children, but I know, I know I've got his full attention. Amen. I know that he loves me. It's supernatural. That's not pride. That's humility. Children just know daddy loves me. Amen. Even if he loses his cool. I remember a friend saying once, I loved coming to your house, but I was kind of afraid of your dad. And I'm going, huh? Oh, yeah. He'd come in, slam doors, and where's my hammer? He'd shout. He was a big, he used to get, but I just go, didn't, he didn't scare me none. You're not scared of your daddy. Are you scared of your daddy? Your Abba, Father in heaven, he can fix everything. Amen. He's the one you go to. You're just like, do you have that revelation in your heart? Daddy, who would you keep? Me and who else? Because you got that special spot in your daddy's heart that nobody else has. Amen. That revelation, and he's saying, these people can't see it. They're as blind as a bat. Why? Because they think they know it all, and they got it all, and they went to Bible school, and they've got their big, big religious robes on, and they're, they're there with all their questions, and they're seeing all the miracles, but it's not making their heart change. It's not drawing them to the Father, and, and the Lord's saying, you know what? Their pride is, is just the only thing standing in the way here. The awesome thing is, is I know there's little spots of dust, of pride and rebellion, the parts of our old nature. But you can lay your hands on your head and lay your hands on your heart and say, God, I do this every day, believe me. I put my hands on my heart and I go, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray the a cleansing of all pride because I, I have seen pride in ministries and it causes things to come down, be ineffective. People see through it. People see through it. How many say amen? amen. You get so tired. You go to so many conferences and you're just going, I'm a, I am so tired of the hype. What Jesus does, what, like we sang, this is so amazing, we sang that song, because I've been, oh, I, this has been one of my flags I fly. What Jesus does is wonderful enough. We don't have to add any foam and fluff to it and make it something it isn't. Did Jesus heal you? Yep, he did. He did because his word says so. Not always because I feel it, amen. But if you steal the glory, if you're prideful, if, if that comes into you, um, Jeremiah, Zachariah this morning, he was talking about all the ministers that have fallen and then given some examples of the ones that he saw were true. And these ones, Billy Graham prayed that every time before he went on the stadium that nothing he did would be counteractive or harmful to the gospel of Jesus Christ. That what Jesus does is wonderful enough. We don't have to add to it. Amen. Because people are seeing through it anyways. Amen? You know what's genuine. You're going, that was wonderful. That was genuine. I can take it home. That is mine. 
But if you didn't, just say I didn't yet, but his word still declares by his stripes I was healed. Then God's going to make another way. But I'm not going to have fake and phony and pride because it's, guess what, all that is based on pride. And it's going to come down. You could, sometimes it takes a while before these ministries start, land up crumbling. But if, if it's mixed, the clay and the other things are mixed, it's going to crumble. It's not going to stand. But what God does is wonderful enough. What Jesus does is wonderful enough. And it's revealed to children. And children choose to be children. You're adults. Right? You're adults. But you can choose to get a brand new heart and choose to have a childlike heart that says, I'm trusting daddy. I don't care if it takes three years or five years. I'm trusting my daddy because this has been revealed to me that he loves me. And he is Lord of the supernatural. He is Lord of the changed life. If he wants me to do some changing and has a word to have me cooperate with all of this process, wonderful. I, I'm open to it. I want change and I want to be like a child and I choose to be like a child in whom I don't think my learning is going to bring me any closer to what I know or, or all these things. It's like pride come down in Jesus' name. Next, he is Lord. He is the Lord of our burdens. Amen? Here's like a child. Jesus has to say to adults, come to me, you weary. Are you tired yet? Are you tired of making it happen? Are you tired of worrying, thinking that's going to change anything? You're worrying and your burdens, it's like, come on, just lay them down at the foot of the cross. Come to me, Jesus is saying, with all your airs and pretending who you got to be. And it's like, come on, aren't you tired of it? Lay it down and become like a child. Come humble, come teachable, come just expecting God to do what only God can do and giving him all the praise and all of the glory. Come to me because guess what? As adults, we tend to get burdened because we tend to worry. And he's going, lay it all down and watch what I'm going to do with it. Have you ever tried to fix something or untie a knot when a kid won't let you have their foot or take a sliver out and they're, and they're not letting you have it? <laughs> or try to fix something somebody else has got. Unless you loose it, unless you cast the care of this onto the Lord, you still got it. Say, I'm not worrying about this anymore. This isn't my problem. God's got to make a way. But I avail myself and teachable. A child is teachable. Lord, show us how do you want us to get out of debt. Lord, show us and teach us how do you want us to move back into health and, and strength in Jesus' name. God's got a plan and a purpose. And do you know what? He's asking us, come to me. I'll tell you the solution. There's a solution for every single problem in here. And Jesus told them what to do. And then we don't have to worry about it. And some things just take time, and it's okay. He's a Lord of my worries. It's not my never mind. And we have to do this several times a day. How many of you? Something comes in, it starts to play on your mind, and you're going, I am not going to worry about it. Somebody said something to me the other night, and it's like, oh my goodness, I had just confessed to Gil how none of this stuff or what people think or anything ever bothers me. And then someone says something, and it's like, oh, wonder why he said that. Wonder what he means. Wonder where he saw me. Wonder what he was thinking. Wonder how many other people he told. And it's like, in the name of Jesus, I'd have cast that thought down uh, several times. He just cast it down in the name of Jesus. Amen. He's Lord of my burdens. He's Lord of my life. You just keep yourself walking right and don't worry about everything else because he's Lord of our, we bring our burdens to him. Praise God. I just see, I got sick and tired where it says, come to me, you who are weary and burdened. Do you ever see people say, I'm sick and tired of this. It's like, good, make Jesus Lord of what you're sick and tired of. I'm sick and tired of trying to figure out how to do this. Good, 
Declare he's Lord. You're sick and tired of trying to figure your spouse out and make your marriage work. Good. Declare Jesus Christ is their Lord. Amen. Just get busy loving them. Never mind. Hallelujah. He's Lord of all those who are sick and tired. Because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And he's saying here, come to me because I'm gentle and humble in heart. What? Jesus who made the heavens and the earth? He's humble? Yeah, he emptied himself and became obedient to death. Is that humble? Was that gentle, laying down his life? If Jesus can be gentle and humble in heart and teachable and go to his father, maybe saying, I'll teach you, learn from me, take my yoke upon you, take my yoke upon me and learn from me. So, what do you need to know? You can ask your father. What do you need to know? Children are teachable. Somehow we sort of think, and I was guilty of that too, when I'm done school, phew, I'm done. Done. Yahoo! It's like, no, 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 no. Then we become Christians and it's like, ah, uh, we start to realize we're just at the beginning of the gate. Uh, we got a lot to learn. And who are we going to learn from? It's the Holy Spirit. Amen. He's come to lead and guide us into all truth. He's going to teach us lots of things. How's he, how's he, he's going to teach us when the harvest comes in. What are we going to do? Well, we'll have to learn from Jesus. Because in the book of Acts, thousands, 5,000 came to know the Lord like that. What did they do with them? Well, he's going to show us. So, again, we don't worry about what we're going to do. Set up big committees. We've got to figure out how to do this, get it all organized. We'll just do what Jesus says. And because why? His yoke is easy. Amen. And when Mark was talking to me about pastors, and I met this guy who's pastor of pastors, I say, you know what? My job is so easy. And they both looked at me and they said, lay hands on me. And I go, you know what? Because I won't pick up what's not mine. If it's not easy, if it's not an easy yoke being me and who God created me to be and to preach his word, it's his word. Have I said anything that isn't his word? It's as easy if we preach his word. It gets complicated when we add man thing to it. And when we have to perform, I don't have to perform. I can't make anything happen. But if I put the word to practice, he's going to make everything happen. Amen? So he's saying, if you're wearing a heavy yoke this morning, Jesus is saying, come to me. Take that yoke off. Take the yoke of religion off, of performing and all this kind of stuff, and just take mine instead. Because my yoke is easy and my burden's light. Amen. And I just want to speak to any disappointments here. If you're disappointed because you didn't get it, it's like, you know what? That's not the end of the story. The wonderful thing is we are all on a journey. And if God's not going to do something one way, he's going to do it another way. Like I preached several weeks ago, seven reasons why God wants to heal your body. Seven reasons, ways he heals. He heals lots of different ways. How he helps one person get out of debt is going to be so different than how he enables somebody else. How he deals with your addictions and your problems is going to be your very own testimony. That's why we, this whole Y book, it has so many testimonies in it of many different ways the Lord drew us to himself, what he did in our lives. When the lights turned on, what have we been doing for Jesus Christ since then? Our stories are all different. So, of course, we have to go to him. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're not going to give up. It's not over till it's over, and it sure isn't over yet because we're still here. 
If God knows all you lay your heart and your life bare before him, that whatever he wants to do, he can do. Whatever he says is like, Lord, you give us the tools. You know you're leading us. Amen. Sometimes we would worry and say, well, maybe if I didn't do this, I've been praying that over you. So you wouldn't look back and say, well, maybe I shouldn't have worked so hard that week. And maybe I shouldn't have gone boating or whatever. We can just so go there. What did I do to make this happen or that happen or or whatever and the Lord is just going don't even go there just you're here now and God is what is his good news his good news is I'm with you even if you walk through a bit of a valley I'll be with you you get a little burdened and a little worried sorry, sorry father I'm just casting the care of that one onto you help me to hear what is there something you want me to do about this or do I just leave it on your workbench for a while here and give you some time. Amen? So you, your father loves you. He is Lord of the supernatural. He is Lord of our changed lives, changed thinking, changed talking, changed relationships. He is Lord. He is Lord of heaven and earth. He is Lord of revelation knowledge that we could actually even know God as our father is, is supernatural. He's Lord of our burdens. He's Lord. Is he your Lord? Because Jesus said, not everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord. A lot of people are calling him Lord. Is he truly your master? Is he truly your prince? Is he truly the one who rules over? Is he truly the one you serve? Amen. And if you do, and you're just going, with all of my heart, Lord, I'm giving this all that I have. I'm giving it all that I have. And if I make a mistake, I know I can get up, brush myself off, get cleansing, and get up again. And, and God, go for you full tilt, because I'm going full tilt for you, God. You're teaching me. I'm learning. I'm growing. I'm becoming more and more like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Be honored. When, when someone, when Jesus is Lord, truly Lord of somebody's life, they're going to live a supernatural life. They're going to be saying, how on earth is this happening? Tell me. Spell it out. Amen. How many want to live those kind of lives? Amen. Bring a glory and honor to the Father, because you will. Amen. Stand to your feet. And if there is an area of your life where you just go, tell you the truth. May as well tell God the truth. How many of you know? It's just good to be honest with the Lord. To tell him the truth. Tell you the truth, Lord. You're Lord of my eternity and you're Lord of my finances. But I don't think I can honestly say you're Lord of my time and activities. Is there an area where you just go, or God, I'm still making the decisions around here about my finances or whatever. Is there, is there an area of your life where you say, I haven't truly made him Lord. Then this morning is your opportunity again. So, Father, we come to your throne of grace and we thank you that you've revealed these things to children. And we choose, Father, to have the mind and the heart of a child. We invite you to create in us a clean heart, a new and a right spirit. We ask you, we give you permission to cleanse our mind and our thinking. Ways we think we already know how things work, Father. We ask you to cleanse our hearts and truly make us like children, teachable. Help us to know that we can come before our Abba Father. Give us a revelation again to a higher degree of how much you love us, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We give you praise this morning. As we go out of this place, Father, I pray that again we just declare you Lord of this day, of everywhere we go, who we speak to, Father. We need you. We declare you Lord of this week. We declare it a, a supernatural blessed week, Father. We declare you Lord of baby Braylon, George, that hit Lord God. We declare that you are Lord. You can give him the divine ability to nurse, oh God, and come home. You are Lord. You put the yes in the doctor's mouth, Lord. We trust you, Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord. You can do anything. You're God of the supernatural. Let's go from this place worshiping Jesus. Amen.